Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. So welcome back to another episode of MacBreak Studio. Today we're going to look at doing some really cool effects with uh, still images and what Mark has is uh, titled Cinemagraphs? Cinemagraphs, yeah. It's actually a way of taking video and turning them into the still images where part of the image moves. Wait, so most of it is frozen like a photograph, but there's a part there's that's just moving, moving yeah. something moving. Yeah, is that popular? Do people like do, doing it? It's that? pretty cool. And actually, um, Peter Wiggins, I have to give some credit to, who runs fcp.co, mm -hmm. uh, did a great set of them that I, it really inspired me. He did uh, that himself? Yeah, he's got a, a beautiful set of them that he's done. And I just thought I'd show people how to do them because they're, they're not very hard to do, but they're kind of dramatic. Okay. So, and I'm gonna show how to do them both Final Cut and Motion because some people use Motion, some people use Final Cut, and there's mm -hmm. advantages to each. So first, a couple examples. Mm -hmm. um, here's an example of, um, this is my wife with a teapot, and if I play it, you'll notice that the, the flames on the teapot, the, the flames are moving and the steam is coming out of the teapot, but she's completely frozen. So cool. Okay, so it's kind of a, an interesting effect where you think you're looking at a photograph, and also I've done some secondary color correction also to kind of focus on the teapot there. Okay, so that's one kind of example. And then I have another example. Here's my son in the front yard, and he's completely frozen, uh, but the water is coming out of the, you know, out of the hose, and the plants are moving there. Uh, and there's also some I've sort of treated it to give it a little bit of a look. You get some focus effects. So these are fun. And the basic idea is you need something in the in the screen that's going to move and something that's frozen. So I'm going to start in Final Cut, and I'm going to start with this particular video. So you start with a video clip, and it's really a pretty simple process. So I've got this video clip and I want to have a still. So um, I'm gonna go back to the source video clip here where I've got a certain frame I'm on where Renee's turned and looked at me and I'm gonna to choose to add a freeze frame. So I've got this connect freeze frame command. Option so gonna, F. Option F, so I'm gonna connect a freeze frame and I'm just gonna drag it to cover the whole thing. Did you do a match frame first so that matches, or it doesn't really matter, uh, that's the frame you I, want. I didn't, but you could match frame okay. to make sure you're the right okay. clip. So it's just, it's definitely a clip from this, it's a still frame from this video clip. So now all I really wanna do is mask this uh, still image to reveal the part that's moving, okay? So what I'll do, uh, the top one is the active one, it's got that little active clip indicator, and I'm gonna go into the effects browser and in the keying category, I'm gonna drag this mask on to the top clip. And let's actually turn off the bottom one, hit the V key, so now we just see the top one. And I'm also gonna zoom out a little bit, uh, command minus, so we can see the edges. Now, I don't want, I want her to be frozen, and I want the teapot to be moving. So I'm just gonna move these over so it freezes her, but then the part of this scene that's got the teapot and uh, the steam coming out, is still hidden by that, okay? And that's, you know, that's pretty much all there is to it. If I shift Z and select the bottom clip and turn it back on again, and I play through it, now she's frozen, but we see the steam coming out of the teapot, and we see the flames yeah. moving, yeah. okay? So as long as the thing that's moving is separate from the thing that you wanna freeze, you're in pretty good shape. Right. And um, if you see, need something that's a little bit more complex mass than four points, then yeah, then it's a little harder because this the, you know Final Cut's kind of limited to this four point mask, and that's where I know Final what they can get more limited. point masks. But before we go there, there <laughs> is something you can do in Final Cut that is a little more difficult to do in Motion. Is one reason I did this in Final Cut is you can take these two clips and put them into a compound clip. So Option G, and I put them in a compound clip, and because of that, I can now color correct this compound clip. And I'm not gonna do it right here, but I'll, I'll open up the, uh, the finishing one just to show you um, where I've color corrected this by using uh, Final Cut Pro's color board and a, a shape mask on it to create the color correction. So and you this just boosted is, the red of the tea kettle. Yeah, so I've actually created a shape mask uh, on this tea kettle itself and inverted it and then um, well, desaturated the rest. Oh, I see. Okay, so I've... Um, kind of the Sin City effect. Yeah, basically the Sin City effect. And this really isn't a tutorial about how to do that, right. but I was able to take advantage of Final Cut's ability to do secondary color correction by creating a mask, okay? Which is a little more difficult to do in motion, actually. So that's why I chose to do this particular one in Final I Cut. I see, so there are some things in Final Cut that are easier yeah, and better yeah. to do in Final Cut. The masking is not as good, but the 
the secondary color correction is really pretty good. So if I go over to motion now, I've got this shot of my son. You can see this is the original video clip where he's kind of moving around. Yeah. You know, I had him stay as, as still as possible. This one's trickier because the thing that's moving is actually connected to the thing that we want to freeze. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a little trickier to do this. And now instead of a motion uses a different vehicle for freezing something, right? In Final Cut, we had the freeze oh, frame. Yeah. You, you just said it. What is it? A hold frame. Yeah. So I'm going to move forward to where he's uh, opening his mouth. He's got kind of a smile going on there, maybe right around there, and then select this layer. And then in the behaviors pop-up menu, I'll choose retiming and choose a hold frame. Actually, before I do that, let's duplicate this so that the hold frame is on the duplicate. Kind of I like say, you're setting up your layers like in Final Cut. Yeah, exactly. I just hit Command D that time. Mm -hmm. um, so retiming, hold frame. And then I'll drag this thing back because I want the hold frame to cover the whole hold, thing. Yeah. So now we just see uh, it's frozen again, right? Because we have right. the frozen thing on top. So once again, it's a matter of masking. But this is the cool thing in Motion. Let me zoom out a little bit to make some room. Motion has a Bezier masking tool, which is basically like a pen tool in Photoshop, where you can draw a mask. So this is I the frozen part. I wish this feature part. was inside Final Cut. I do sure. too. Because here I can draw, and I'm actually going to draw the mask that cuts right across the front of the hose, and then his shadow might move too. So I'm going to kind of mask around a shadow a little bit and do that. And once again, if I turn off the bottom clip, we can see what I've masked, mm -hmm. OK? And then if I play this back, uh, he's still, and the water's moving, yeah. OK? So like right away, I've got it. Now, this is a little tougher. If I hold down Command and Spacebar and zoom in, uh, and then play, we can see how the water's, <laughs> he didn't hold the water perfectly still, yeah, right? Sure. So this is where it can get a little tricky. But what's kind of neat is, let me hit F7 for the heads up display. I'm going to add some feathers to this mask. That'll help blend. See how that's blending that change together yep. by feathering that? And then if I zoom back out and deselect it so you don't see the actual mask and play it, we've got a, you know, kind of a neat little action there. And in fact, I'll start playing. It moves a little too much there. I'll start there. I'm going to hit Command Option I to set a play range endpoint at that point uh, because he moved a little bit before that. But now we've got a nice effect. Yep. And in fact, uh, I have a finished version where I've added some filters. The other nice thing about motion is you can add a lot of filters very easily to, and which you can in motion in, in um, Final Cut as well. But um, you can just see here, what I've done is I've added some uh, levels to change the overall contrast, a sepia filter, vignette, hue saturation. And I've added a camera, a little dolly move on this too. And uh, so now look, the camera's kind of pushing in on it as we see that action. Now you can do that same kind of camera move in Final Cut Pro using Ken Burns. Right. Right, the Ken Burns in the crop effect. Sure. So basically you can do this whole thing in motion or Final Cut and take advantage of the tools that they each have. Motion's a little better on masking. Uh, you can do the, the secondary color correction in motion, but Final Cut's a lot, little easier to do that kind of secondary yeah. color correction. I, I can hear some people now as they're watching this, why can't I send my clip <laughs> from Final Cut to motion so I can use the mask tools and come? Right, right, right. And right. then I get the best of both worlds. Yeah. That would solve a problem. Yeah. It would solve a problem now, for now me. We actually I'm just have, saying. I know. We <laughs> actually have in Ripple Tools, we have an eight point mat. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say that. And you can feather it. So you can download our, our plugin and do it that way. And you can have the best of both right, in Final Cut. So Final Cut or Motion, either way, uh, a really cool effect, fun to do. A lot of fun. And, uh, That's so, a very, very interesting looking fit. I really like it. Well, first of all, thanks, Peter, for inspiring this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for an excellent tutorial. And so play around with uh, Motion Cinemagraphs. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, uh, follow us on Facebook. And thanks for watching MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time.